Hello, hello everyone, I am Cued, and today I want to be making a beat and then make a beat video. Because usually I kind of do these at the same time. I'll like to make a beat and then I also like to make a video for it for Instagram or YouTube as a way to build visibility around what I make, and especially over the next couple of months. This is going to be a strategy I'm going to need to really start following, just because I have three to five tracks I want to drop soon. people to care about them when I drop them and no one's gonna care if they don't even know who I am. Maybe if I got super lucky that would happen, but I'm gonna have to kind of create a better habit of doing this stuff a lot more regularly than I do it. So today I want to kind of show a quick process of how I'm making a beat, then quickly make a beat video, then edit that beat video all on camera. This is a lot to do and hopefully this is this happens quickly for me because I usually run into a lot of issues while I'm doing this stuff. So. Here's hoping. Today specifically, what I want to do is I want to resample an old track that I made like a couple of years ago. I think like maybe in 2016 actually I made it. I've been resampling a lot of my old tunes where I wasn't really that great at making stuff then, but the core ideas weren't that bad. And I'm kind of realizing like, oh, this is a cool way to maybe use some of those ideas that were unused and maybe make something that's a little bit more fully realized out of them. This is a thing I'm trying to do more of and get better at, so this will be a little bit of an experimental challenge here, but uh, here goes nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Beatmaker 3. I already have a little bit of an idea of what I'm trying to make, so maybe that's cheating in a small way, but I'm just gonna go with it. All right, go to samples. All right, I got the sample. Let's see, drag that over. And I need to plug my headphones in. Oops. <laughs> All right, got the sample loaded, got my headphones plugged in because that's necessary and I got the sample here that I need to trim. So what I need to do is I need to kind of go here and then let's preview it really quickly. Let's go ahead, I need to get some drums first and that way I can kind of start sketching the idea. Drums are a helpful way for me to do that. So let's see, boom bap, I need boom bap kick right here. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. I want that snare, but that's one sound and a much larger sample. So I need to basically trim that, isolate that there. Alt snare. I A lot of the process looks like this where I'm not really sure what to even do. So I think I want to start with mapping out what I want the sample to be now that I have the drums kind of blocked out. So let me copy that here and paste that. Okay, I kind of like that. That's nice. Do I want to pitch bend it lower? That's what I want. That's what I want. Okay. Cool. Okay, uh, before I go any further, I want to go ahead and, and, and add some sort of side chain to the sample so that I don't have to do it for each individual sample going forward. If I can add a Dynamics Processor, go ahead and side chain these now, and then copy this sample to other pads, then I can just save time that way. It's side chains, but I need to raise the volume of the kick drum because you can't really hear the kick drum. I also need to adjust the attack of the sample so that it doesn't cut in awkwardly. It has a nice fade in, natural kind of fade in there. Do that with this one too. OK, 
okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. But I don't want that to be too, too overpowering. Something kind of like that. Ooh, this is, it's not bad. It's not bad. I, I like that. Okay. So now I got to really figure out what it is I'm wanting to do with these core samples here. Because right now they kind of all just sound like chops of the same sound. And I want to give each sound a unique spin so that it really does feel like I'm transforming it into something new. So I think what I want to do is I want to take this sample. And then I want to lower the pitch more on a different pad. Of this process is uncertainty it doesn't come easy to me it, it, it never does and it's something where even when i have a cool idea in my head i go into it ready to tackle it then i'm like well what's next because now i have to build bass and i have to build strings i have to add some textures around this so i need to make sure that this part is solid enough to where i'm actually able to do that in a convincing way <laughs> Okay, well, we're gonna stick with that for now. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it like this. I was like, my hype meter was here when I started and now it's kind of like here. And that's the creative process. That's just what happens. It's like, oh, this idea is awesome. And you're like, no, it's not. And then you're like, maybe and you're like, eh. it's just that push and pull. I'm gonna get to a place where ultimately I do dig this and then we'll go forward with it from there. But uh, this is just kind of the growing pains of the process. So, need to set my tempo to about 93 BPM. Just try and practice with that. Now I need to get the bass. I guess we'll go ahead and start adding some sort of texture. I love the sparkle sounds. I always do. So we go general pasteboard. I probably should label this sound because I don't even know really what it is. I just kind of have to guess. <laughs> That's not good. That's not organized at all. Something kind of like that. I want to add a dynamics processor, compress the mess out of that. Get some reverb on there. And now I want to add some strings. So we're going to go in, we're going to add this. All right, cool. Then I want to lower that level because I know that's going to be kind of loud. And I have a preset I like to go with here. So we will see. No effects to that yet, but just kind of sketching that out. So now I want to add some effects to that. I like to do some emverb and reverb to make it feel like they're real strings because since they're synthesized strings, they're gonna sound virtual and you ideally wanna get them to sound like they're a part of the scene. And you will get that by adding effects that simulate whatever space you normally hear those kinds of orchestral strings in. For me, that's like a concert hall. So I'm trying to emulate that as much as possible. I've got everything mapped, now 
I guess I need to go ahead and start recording something. I don't know. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try something. I'm probably gonna fiddle with it more, then make the beat video, then come back, put everything together. But I just kind of wanted to show that initial process of building the framework for it. Uh, you know, I, I think it. I think it's all right. I think it's all right. So I have my beat, and now I have my video for the beat video filmed, and so I need to start adding some effects to this. And this is going to be kind of a weird process, because I'm uh, not going to lie, this is work around city. It's not easy to get the effects going, and this usually like slows down my process a lot. I probably could be putting out videos a lot faster if I wasn't trying to do this. For some reason, though, I like doing this, and I like adding the effects to the videos. It's just something that I've enjoyed doing. Well, for a while now, I've been doing these kinds of like video edits that are mobile for years at this point. I'm going to be doing a lot of things that don't really make the most sense and aren't the most efficient just because when you're working with mobile video this is a platform that hasn't evolved a bunch you're talking about digital art and music production those things have evolved a lot in the space but mobile video is really where this is weakest and there are some improvements that have been made but when you're talking about adding visual effects and things it requires a little bit of a kind of jerry-rigging I'm gonna try playing around with Matter App first and seeing if I can come up with an effect I'd like to add to that beat video there. I already have a few other effects that I'm gonna be adding that are already made. I'm gonna see what I can put together in LumaFusion and time everything to the music, and then what I will do is pull all that into Video Leap and blend it all together there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up Matter, and Matter is an app that allows you to essentially use 3D objects that are built into the app with your images, and I can import an image, for example, and add that object that I want to use and it will refract and sort of like uh, appear over the image in a very interesting way. And you have different uh, types of reflections and wrappings and refractions that you can use, transparent, you can use this in some really cool ways. So right now I have an object that has a shadow. You can play around with them as you see fit. I'm going to turn off the shadow here and I'm going to choose a style and then I can choose a different object, something that's a bit more complex and a bit more dynamic. And then when I do this, you can see that there's this really cool movement that you can achieve with the objects because you can use the objects to generate videos. And that's really exciting because you can come up with some interesting possibilities. So what I'm not liking about this right now is the object is really cool when it moves, but you have that image in the background and it just doesn't really look dynamic because it's just sitting there still. So we're going to go and abandon this. Just sorry, not sorry. We're quitting you. We're quitting you. I'm going to go to a different album and I'm going to bring in a black image here. So black image. This isn't going to necessarily make the most sense for a project. At least that's how it seems. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to style and I'm going to tap this plus button here, which kind of looks like a Polaroid photo. I'm going to go to the photo that I want to add. And then the image is now baked into the 3D object. And so whenever I move the 3D object, I have that nice kind of dynamic movement, but I don't have that static image in the background. And that's going to give me a lot of flexibility with this because now I can adjust the shadow, get a really nice look there. I can decide where I want the light source to be coming from. And I actually don't want any light source because that kind of ruined the flow of the visual. And now I can choose an object that I would like to be showing whatever effect I want. And I can go in with something like that. That's kind of neat. Not crazy about the light source still. I want that light source gone. There we go. Huh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Huh. And I can change the rotation by tapping the X, Y, and Z buttons, or Z. And then I can adjust the speed. I can also make it pulse and hover. And I can even add music. I don't like adding music here because I'm going to add the music in post with some other program. But it's nice to have that option. And this app is pretty old. I mean, this thing came out, what, like 2014? So, I mean, this has been sitting here. So if you don't know about it, you should get it. You should use it. Go right ahead, try and make something with it because you can come up with some really interesting stuff. So I'm going to export the video. I don't know if I'm going to really use it. I guess we'll see. Again, not knowing what to do with the creative process is 
uh, it can be maddening sometimes, but you just got to go with something. So I'm just going to make the video. The risk isn't that high. At the end of the day, I don't have to even share this if I don't want to. And I would encourage you to feel free to explore those risks. If it might seem like it might not work at first, just try it anyway if you feel like it. I'd rather try it and fail than regret not doing it later, but that's just me. So funny story, I just went ahead and started the next step, but I forgot to screen record and it turned out that the effect that I had just exported from Matter anyway didn't even really fit with the video, so I guess it works out. So we're gonna go back into Matter, I'm gonna fix the effect and try a different one, try a different configuration, then bring that into LumaFusion and really show the process in a much better way because, well, I didn't capture it apparently. So we're gonna go back into Matter. And there's this handy continue recent edit thing. And this just lets me jump back into the project that I had. So I'm not thrilled with that configuration. I want something different. So you're gonna play around with a different style here. Uh, what I like to go for whenever I'm looking for a potential effect is I like to look for something that looks unique. I don't like the things to look like they're just some sort of preset for matter, you know? I like to make it look like it's, something new. One of the ways I do that is by creating my own template that I import into the Matter app. And I know that with Matter you can also import your own 3D files. I haven't really done that before. 3D is a space I'm just now starting to really get into. Now with things like this Shaper 3D app that I've been using, uh, more on that app in another video, this is going to be really cool for this type of workflow. So I'm playing around with different objects right now and some of them, some of them work, some of them are a bit extra, like that's too much. Let's see. So this uh, this object could be cool. Need to make sure that that looks right before I export it. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to mask it around me so that it doesn't interfere too much. But something that is providing that visible element that really, really clearly illustrates the tempo and the vibe of the beat. I don't really know if it matches the, the style, but I can blend it in a way where it's not too, too overpowering and it can work. Now I need to bring that exported video from Matter into LumaFusion. And I have a project here that I can use and it's already the beat video project. And I can add the effects as a separate layer and hide this one. And this will allow me to time it to the same tempo and the same sound that I have in the same project and not be confused about anything. So we're going to go ahead and bring in that video. I'm probably going to sync it to the kick. So what I'm going to do is just start chipping away. I start splitting this effects clip into a bunch of different parts and then I can just continue cloning and duplicating that across the board to switch it around and start to make the original sound feel more alive by giving it that nice visual sort of representation and dynamic there. So for something like this, I need to basically duplicate that. So. All right. This process takes a while, so I'm not gonna show the whole thing but just kind of showing aspects of it. It's definitely tedious, but it's part of the process. Then you have those really quick kicks, which is definitely, definitely tough. Tough to nail that. Another trick I like to do is if I want to give a specific uh, cut, a uh, different variation, I'll rotate it and then I can kind of switch it around. And that way it tells the viewer like, oh, this is a different part, or oh, this gives it just a different feel, depending on which part. That works, that works. This is gonna be pretty boring, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just start editing this together, and then we'll come back when this is done, and I can show kind of what I did, and then we'll bring that into Video Leap along with the other effects, and finish this thing. Something else that I can do that saves a lot of time is I can copy the attributes of a clip by doing that and then I can paste them to a different clip if I want to uh, add those same exact settings from that previous one to this one. So if I do that, now I have the settings from that other clip and that's super helpful for me. So I've almost finished chopping up the effects to the original sound and right now you can see kind of like how. That's cool, but there's still that blank space here. I need to add that there, all of those same patterns. 
And instead of just going in and manually trying to chop all that up, the easiest thing that I can do is I can go in and I can clone each individual clip here by doing this and just getting all of these clips duplicated, then dragging all of them over to where I want them to be on the timeline. And that way I don't have to go in and manually trim anything else because I've already got everything blocked out. I might as well just repurpose the assets. Always reuse assets when you can. Always reuse what you can if it's doable because you're just gonna save more time that way. Then I need to figure out where the first bit of effects here, if I go back to the beginning, I need to figure out where this belongs. So I'm gonna drag it over we're just gonna figure out where that is. I think it's here. Yes, it is. So now all I have to do is just drag each clip over and just it just auto locks there. It's really easy. And I love how easy that is because this just allows me to save so much time. So I'm gonna wrap that up and then we're gonna export that. I can just click movie, photos, and then we're gonna export in 4K so we get highest quality possible since we're going to be re-exporting this a couple more times. So now that all of that's taken care of, it's time to go for the home stretch and bring all of those visual effects into Video Leap and start blending all that together. Need to first of all tap this plus button, need to get my video. Oh, I have so many and I don't even know which one it fully is. I think it's this one. So the first thing I want to do is split this original clip and then delete the unnecessary stuff. And then I want to go ahead and add my visual effects. Let's scroll down. Let's see. I saved it here. Okay. So now we got that here and just kind of follow the steps that I covered in the video leap tutorial I did, where we're going to add that to mixer. We're going to drag that back here and drag that all the way back to the beginning. Well, not all the way to the beginning because I'm going to need to sync it up. And then I just want it blended. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm going to have to mask, which is what I was thinking I was going to have to do just because it's too, it's covering me too much. So boom, there is where that's going to have to start. Cause just, that's where I touch the pads. Oh no, no, I can drag it to the beginning because I had the blank space, right? That's the benefit of editing in that project where I had everything kind of synced up. Then I'm going to mute the audio here cause I don't want that. And then let's see. What I definitely need to do is I'm going to go ahead and mask this because this is bugging me. So let's see. I think the linear there and adding a nice kind of gradual. That's kind of neat. I think I want it to be a bit more of a gradual fade. Drag that there. I'm obviously going to adjust that effect. We're going to adjust the hue. We're going to go for something. So we're gonna go with the hue there and then we're gonna just lower the brightness a lot. Contrast is what we're gonna bump up. And then bring the contrast back just a bit. And then let's see, something like that. That's cool, that's cool, I like that. That's cool, yeah, okay. So now that we got that, I need to go ahead and import my next set of effects. Where was it? I think it's this and then it's this. So I'm gonna just go through and trim each effect really quickly before I start blending it. Cause I mean, that's tedious and boring. So everything's pretty much trimmed now. So I just need to drag and drop, which this part's really easy. This is gonna be really quick. So going to add that to mixer. And it's just gonna be a matter of kind of breaking it up uh, across the timeline evenly. So can add screen layer for that. Okay, okay. And I can kind of tilt that around. Something kind of like that. Aha, uh -huh, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Something kind of like that. And then aha, uh -huh. I want the I want the effect of the blue effect to go up into the light. So what that means I'm going to need to do, I'm going to need to get kind of creative with how I arrange it. And then something like that. Ah, oh, it's just chasing it and it's too slow. So what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to speed this up a lot. 
Okay. All right. So let's see. Speed. Let's get that up to. Let's put that up a lot. Uh huh. That's what I'm looking for. Something something along those lines. I needed to trim it some more. It still is not quite. Not quite right. And also, the opacity is a little too strong. I want it to be a little bit. I want it to be a little bit fainter so that. Uh, you can still see the pad drumming, and I also want to keyframe the opacity so that it fades out when I'm done. All right, cool. Now it's bringing in the next effect in. see how this plays. It's looking pretty good so far. The effects seem to fit kind of nicely. I'm just crossing my fingers hoping this is working. Okay, okay, I think that's good. So after I apply the effects to my beat videos like this, what I'll do is I will bring that video back into LumaFusion and color grade it a bit and send it off and then it's done. And the final result ends up looking like this. So it was a very roundabout way of showing you my process for creating beat videos. So it's not practical. To me, like I've said, mobile video is more interesting to me in terms of innovation and the potential for innovation rather than the efficiency of the process. I would not consider mobile video to be very efficient when it comes to adding uh, visual effects. I think when it comes to just editing video in general, mobile video is very efficient and it's very fast and it's a lot faster than editing on the computer. But when it comes to adding effects and things, there's a lot of room for growth and improvement. And I am very interested to see what's gonna happen in the next decade with mobile video because like I said, there is so much room for improvement. I think a lot of people are you know, trying to debate how useful it is with digital art and music production, but I don't think this has even begun to scratch the surface of what's actually possible, especially with how powerful the hardware is. And that's gonna continue to ramp up as new devices continue to enter the fold. So I am very, very curious to see what happens with that. And I think that, you know, there could be some interesting stuff down the line. I guess we will see what happens. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope that this wasn't too long. I tried to fit all of it. I'm looking forward to doing more process videos like this because I think this is a lot of fun. But anyway, that's it for now. So thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll catch you guys later.